I am already against the next war. Are you, are you against the next war? How do we know that we are already against the next war and we don't even know who it's against? It's because we are against war as an institution. We are against using violence to try to, to uh, 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 resolve any conflict. We know that it doesn't work and it makes things worse. So we're, in, we're against the institution, our system of war. And that's what I'm going to talk about is war is not one thing, but a conglomerate of a lot of things that feed into that. So the theory behind the war system is that might makes right and, and that we perpetuates a vicious cycle of people, uh, of nations uh, accumulating more and more weapons until now we have you know, uh, tens of thousands of, of, of times we could destroy the whole earth. Uh, but so feeling threatened by mightier nations, smaller ones uh, try to increase their military capabilities, distrust and suspicion increase, which fosters even more military buildup and posturing. Nations start making military alliances, which promote an us versus them kind of mentality. It doesn't take long before adversaries become enemies, and the self-perpetuating, self-fueling, self-reinforcing war system is out of control. If we are to be successful in dismantling this war system, we need to dispel the widespread belief that it is impossible to end war. Many people believe that war is a part of human nature, or that we have always had war, or that there is such a thing as a good war. Even though these are myths, it is this interlocked set of beliefs and values that lay down the foundation of the war system. Based on this solid foundation is the military-industrial complex that President Eisenhower warned us about in 1961. But now there are many other additional factors that make up that complex. Factors like the corporate, also called mainstream, media, which supports and promotes militaris militarism and war. General Barry McCaffrey, who is seen frequently on MS MSNBC and NBC, as a military and political analyst, he sits on the board of directors of defense contractor DynCorp. It was also on MSNBC that Brian Williams described the 59 Tomahawk missile attack on Syria this way. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen, I am guided by the beauty of our weapons. They are beautiful pictures of fearsome armaments. Speaking about the same missile strike, CNN's Fareed Zakaria praised President Trump's leadership, saying, quote, I think Donald Trump became president of the United States last night. I think this was actually a big moment, he said. And I don't have to tell you what they were saying on Fox News. These are, these are the left-wing news, uh, news broadcasters, right? So uh, also on cable news outlets, you see political pundits that are from think tanks like Brookings Institute, Hoover Institute, American Enterprise Institute, Heritage Foundation. Other components that make up the war system are institutions like the military services themselves, the CIA, the National Security Agency, Homeland Security, and the surface war colleges like the Naval War College that I myself graduated from. Uh, war corporations like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, ba Boeing, Raytheon, conglomerates like GE, which manufactures weapons components, including nuclear weapons, and owns MSNBC and NBC. Lobbyists, which donate millions of dollars to Congress members, who then support legislation which profits those corporations and or provides jobs in their districts. The components of a single weapon are deliberately made in many separate states so that Congress will continue to support the defense budget. Occasionally, Congress wants to spend more than the Pentagon even asked for. The war culture, which is perpetuated in schools and religious institutions, movies, video games like Call of Duty, and the conflation of sports in the military. Recruiting, the military gets a budget of $3 billion to bring people into the military. And the idolization and glorification of service members, the thank you for your service before you know what that person has done. And the fear factor, the propaganda that makes people um, willing to, to give up 54 cents out of every dollar because they're afraid, they're more afraid of a terrorist than they are of having a heart attack. 
And the force that underlies it all is capitalism, as, as Phyllis was, was saying, that the profit modi, motive. Uh, war is a $1.7 trillion a year business, and so somebody is making a whole lot of money. So, um, so we see that we need to get away from this, this uh, war culture, this war system, and we need to replace it with another kind of global security system, something that will take its place and help us resolve conflicts in a way that is positive and, and not a violent. Um, on, in the, the author Hannah Arendt vote in On Violence, she wrote that the reason warfare is still with us is not a death wish of our species, nor some instinct, uh, instinct of aggression, but the simple fact that no substitute for this final arbiter in international affairs has yet appeared on the political scene. So now we need to develop that final arbiter. Uh, there are several steps that we could take. Uh, we could demilitarize it by shifting to a non-provocative defense posture. We have uh, hundreds and hundreds of military bases in other countries. We have car aircraft carriers that um, routinely patrol different sectors of, of the globe. Um, we could phase out uh, uh, the arms trade. Uh, we could uh, dismantle military alliances like NATO. And so we um, also need to create the, the positive side, the structure that's going to resolve these conflicts. And that includes uh, strengthening international institutions, uh, reforming the United Nations. It's not perfect, we know that, but it is very crucial. It needs to be reformed to take away the veto power of the Security Council. It needs to be reformed to give more representation from the smaller countries. Um, we need to create international laws, and we need to pull all the nations into the International Criminal Court jurisdiction. The United States, Israel, and South Sudan, I think, uh, wrote uh, a letter saying they absolutely had no intention ever of being um, uh, signing on to the ICC. So, um, we need to support these uh, support treaties that we've signed um, and support international um, NGOs. I'll just, uh, I'll close with this one thing, and I know probably everybody's aware of this, but there's a perfect example of the war system thinking compared to the, the other system that we'll call it the non-war system. So the perfect example was expressed when the U.S. and 40 other countries boycotted the recent nuclear ban treaty. Quoting from the joint U.S.-U.K.-French statement, quote, Working towards the shared goal of nuclear disarmament and general and complete disarmament must be done in a way that promotes international peace and security and strategic stability based on the principle of increased and undiminished security for all. We all share a common responsibility to protect and strengthen our collective security system in order to further promote international peace, stability, and security. It's just Orwellian. So this statement is a very clear articulation of war system thinking. All the nuclear countries and NATO members, which are under, it's a tool of the, of the United States, I'm sure you know that, who are tethered to the war system refuse to even participate in these uh, discussions. On the other hand, you have two-thirds of the world who are working cooperatively over, over years of discussion and diplomacy and negotiation to create this critical treaty. is a perfect example of a nonviolent alternative system. So World Beyond War, the organization that I spend most of my time working on now, has developed what we call a blueprint for this new nonviolent alternative system, and we call that a global security system, an alternative to war, and I think many of you probably have seen copies of it. It's on the back table. That's the second edition, um, and we're working on the third edition right now. Uh, that we also gave copies of that to all of the sections that were there at The Hague, and um, say many branches have taken it. The um, Tucson branch, uh, a section on the role of patriarchy in war, which was in the second edition, like I said, we have back there. We're working on the third edition, uh, which we will be giving to everyone at our upcoming conference. Um, uh, it's called uh, uh, Nowhere 2017, War and the Environment at American University in DC. There's a green flyer on the back that tells you more about that. But uh, we will be giving all attendees a copy of our third edition of that book. And we look forward to working, uh, World Beyond War, working more with uh, WILF, and especially on in an international way, to uh, 
to push back against the United States. I think it's going to take efforts from outside pushing in. We, we don't have the power anymore from inside the country to really influence our legislators. We, we don't have it. So it's going to take some kind of economic pressure, a boycotts or sanctions or something on the United States before they will change their ways. So we really need to work globally. Thank you so much.